It's too late for Stellantis to save Jeep. With all of this inventory piling up, it's no wonder Jeep Stellantis can't sell products. They've lost, their sales have gone from about a million units sold in 2018 down to about 650,000 this year alone. Jeep has also gone through some of the most major VP or CEO changes this year of almost every other manufacturer. They've changed out CEO, we now have Velosa, and as well, they're on the second or even third leader of the North American market selling Jeep products because they can't sell. New executive changes to the company. And Jeep is one of the longest standing vehicles on the industry market today. Next only Dodge and Jaguar, which are selling about 130 days supply, means that they are double what the industry averages, where Honda, Toyota, and Lexus are down around 30 days supply. And right here we have one of the only Chryslers left on the market today. It's the Pacifica. And they're down 19% year over year in terms of overall sales. And that follows very closely with the Jeep products, which are also, as of July, down 19% year over year in terms of overall sales. Nobody are buying Jeeps, Chryslers, they're priced way too high. They're actually trying to incentivize these by knocking about an additional $4,000 off of the base sticker price for these vehicles, hoping people are gonna start keep buying these again. But quite honestly, at $70,000, $80,000 for these vehicles, you're in BMW X5 territory, almost basic BMW X5. You're in Audi SQ territory. You're definitely in Mercedes territory. And clearly this is not the same category of vehicle. They're trying to pitch it that way. They need to chop these prices down at least 25% off the top if they're hoping to make any sales on these types of vehicles right here. Like right here, for example, let's take another look. Okay, what do we got here? Okay, this one's 66 grand. That's uh, talking a little bit, still kind of pricey. We're dealing with four by four. This is a pretty standard looking unit. Nothing too crazy going on here, but it's clearly not where people are still paying because at 66 grand, it's still 75K out the door. So it's still too much money, way too much money for these. And that's a big part of the reason why Jeep vehicles have been on the decline drastically. Sales are almost half of what they were few short years ago. And as of July, the vehicles like the Wrangler, like we're looking at right here, are down in sales 17% year over year. Whereas the Gladiator that we're looking at right here, which is essentially the pickup truck version of the Wrangler. Here's the regular Wrangler. Here's the Gladiator. It has the pickup truck box. As you'll notice right there, Gladiator stickers and decals. These vehicles here are down 24% year over year in the same time frame. Nobody wants them, nobody can afford them because of the cost of living crisis and the high prices associated with a lot of these vehicles. Look, even this, for example, we have a 4xe, that's a great looking unit, and obviously it's a Wrangler Rubicon X 4xe and, wow, $86,000. That's clearly the prices are way too high. There's an elephant in the room and we'll discuss that in a second. But here we see all these Jeeps. We've got Willys, we've got Wranglers of all shapes and sizes. A Sahara here with a beautiful top. How about over here? Here's a Sport. This is more of a base model. This clearly has plastic, simple, basic, no running gear. It's basically, yeah, it does have a hard top on here, but it's a very simple unit. And clearly it's a Sport, Wrangler four-door Sport S 4x4. Wow, $67,000, not a cheap vehicle. And then Jeep's one of their most popular vehicles, the Jeep Grand Cherokee like this, are actually down 26% overall sales because of their high prices as well. Down to about 52,000 units were sold last year, but things were getting so bleak for Jeep, they actually got rid of the little Renegade, which essentially is very similar to the Fiat Panda. And as well, they decided to toast the base Cherokee because it wasn't selling very well at all. And the margins just weren't there for the brand. So it makes you wonder what's going on with Jeep. And then little vehicles like this, we have the Jeep, obviously a little compass, quite a small subcompact SUV and they are going for extraordinary money. I came across some that were 47,000. I even saw one that was dressed up, had all-terrain tires, and had a nice little stripe on the hood, and it was going for $55,000. Is that a little too much? That's expensive. So while almost every single Jeep is grossly down in sales, the only, one, the only Jeep holding its own right now is the Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer, and that's only because they're fresh on the market. So what's wrong, and why? Do, how do dealers, how do manufacturers get out of some of this conundrum? Well, it's all often like politics. Blame the guy before you. But everybody likes to blame everybody else and say, you know what, it's strategy, not marketing properly. Definitely don't have the right product. But that's not clearly the issue in a lot of cases. It comes down to pricing. Let's take a look at how much a base Jeep actually costs. 
how much does the cheapest entry-level Jeep Wrangler cost in this current marketplace? Let's take a look. Right here we have a very basic looking unit. This is the cheapest Jeep you can get right now. Obviously, you get steel rims, you get plastic here, very basic around here, nothing too extra going on. And as well, on top of that, you get the fabric roof, which doesn't hold up very well into Canadian or Northern weather, but you get the fabric roof, you get the two doors, so it's the basic model, and even inside, this one's a manual gearbox, and you get cloth seats, a very basic setup. And really not much, no frills. Sure, it's four wheel drive, two door, cloth top, steel rims. Not a whole lot going on here, but this vehicle here costs you about $45,000, if you can believe that. Then you dress it up, you get a Rubicon, two door hard top and fancy rims. Now all of a sudden you're into $65,000. Then you're into the $70,000. And then you're into the $72,000. I've seen Jeeps, the four by E's go up as much as $80,000. Forget about the 392, that's out of this world for most people. Most people who should be targeted to buy these, which is your common lunchbox Joe like myself, who just uses these for day-to-day -day commuter and a weekend off-roading experience. Jeeps never used to be considered luxury cars, luxury vehicles. They were always built for the middle class. People like you and I who are prepared to buy one of these vehicles, who can afford it on a moderate budget. But now I don't know too many people can go out and actually afford one of these late model brand new vehicles. Like we have a Grand Cherokee Limited right here, has all the beautiful paint and the great exhaust tips and big beautiful rims. Of course it has all the luxury amenities, but how can you afford any of these? They are out of my pocket, out of my budget, and the budget of way too many people in Canada and United States, which tells the CEO of Stellantis that nobody's buying. Nobody wants these vehicles. Tavares is getting stressed out and is actually reacting. And whilst Velos is the current CEO of Jeep products, we know Tavares was visiting North America and realized that the plants have an assembly line issue. There's quality control issues and generally they've got to get their ship in order to make money. And unfortunately, Jeeps are not selling. But is it a quality control issue as much as it is a pricing issue? So Bill Peffer, who is the lead of North American sales for Jeeps, has now been turfed after nine short months in office. He's no longer in charge of that. He's been moved down the road. And now replacing him is a Bob Broderdorf. He will now be the head of Jeep North America. He will oversee strategy, sales, and marketing for the brand in the U.S., Canada, and Mexico. Broderdorf served as the senior vice president of Ram, and before that, the head of Dodge sales operations. Who apparently has a new numerous years of experience is now brought in to oversee the movement of the Jeep products, try to stimulate, trying to get sales up. But I'll tell you what sales, but I'll tell you how to stimulate sales. Hit the price tags, drop the prices down 30, 40, 50%, then you'll see people buy. Not strategize how you can fool consumers because people are done getting fooled. It's bad enough that a lot of consumers are getting fooled by the fact that a lot of these vehicles by Stellantis are sitting around for weeks, months, and even years in some cases. That means the idea of lot rot is kicking into high gear. And yet, people are buying these vehicles. Poor. Yeah, they're high, heavily incentivized. People are getting deals, small discounts, but you can't replace the fact that these tires are only rated for eight or nine years. The batteries to turn this vehicle on are only good for five or six years before they need replacing. The fluids under in that engine right there also need to be changed every single year. Just look at your owner's manual. You have to change it, change it annually or eight, 12,000 miles, whichever comes first. But the bottom line is, De fluids are deteriorating, engines are deteriorating, tires, paint, everything is rotting away. That's right, lot rot is taking a toll because these vehicles are sitting so long. The average time that it takes to dissipate all these vehicles for Jeep is 129 days. Of course, that just means it takes 129 days to dissipate the current inventory that they sell at the current rate. With all of these Jeeps parked on the lot, look at all these compasses just goes all the way almost to the very end over there. And all of these Jeeps, whether you're talking about Wranglers, Grand Cherokees, or even of course the Wagoneers, these piles, these vehicles are piling up. There's too much inventory. They're not selling quick enough. They're sitting on the lot for a long period of time. That now translates to floor plan costs, which cost these dealers an immense amount of money at these mega lots to have these vehicles sitting around. And unfortunately, now it's getting real. And we're seeing the CEO scream and holler panic, we need help. And they're trying damage control by changing the leadership of Jeep again.
So what are your thoughts? Do you think this leadership change is gonna be all it takes to turn Jeep around? Because the way from my perspective, where we see vehicles are sitting for days and days and months on end, and the fact that all we're doing is changing leadership and not impacting the core root of the issue, and that's pricing, that clearly means during the cost of living crisis, people aren't buying. So is this enough? I'd love to hear your story down there. Please do share. Hope to see you each and everyone on the next one. See you real soon. Bye-bye.